Okay, let's let's just uh, skip this uh, the question part. So, what is the first question is what is red cap? Anyone? What's red cap? It's data collection. It's a electronic data capture. What else? Okay, what is I two B two? Can I hear it out loud? Data query. Research data warehouse. Any other any other answer? What are the uses of I2B2? Say that again. Cell service query tool. Common data model. Anything else? So just notice. So red cap, quickly what comes to your mind is survey, right? It's data collection. But when you say I2B2, there's a little bit because there are so many users and there are so many applications, and it's hard to communicate what I2B2 is. And that is a challenge which a lot of people have you know, in the I2B2 community for expanding the community. It's hard to tell what I2B2 is. And that's what we have learned in the Global South project that, let me get my slides up here, the fallback slides. Okay, so while help is on the way to get the slides back up here. Okay, yeah, this full screen. Full screen. So okay, I can see my screen now. So what is I2B2, right? Uh, you have the process of care happening, and information is getting generated. And there are several uses of this data. Several people could use it. It could be used for clinical care. It could be used for research. What is what we primarily use for use it for in the US? You could use it for hospital operation. You could use it for public health policy. All these stakeholders need access to that data. How do they do it? How, how do they access the data? I have to ask the programmer, can I have access to this data? Either get the whole, whole repository and then analyze it, or some way get into the repository and do some analysis. Right? So they have to rely on a programmer. And that causes a problem, right? How, is, how are you going to share this, this information? And that's where I2B2 comes in the picture, right? So I2B2 is a tool which makes this information accessible in a secure way. Do you agree with that definition? So I2B2 is a health data management and analysis platform. Does it make sense? Do you agree with this definition? So that's the definition we have learned in the Global South project when we are talking to institutions about I2B2. And uh, so, so that's a working definition. I'm glad that a lot of you agree with it. OK, then what is Global South? So I2B2 Global South project, what is the Global South? So Global South are all those countries which you don't see on the, on the first map, the map of the world. So the first chart over there is the publications, the distribution of publications in the world, the science publications. So you can almost see Africa is very small, then 
you know, than what you see on the graph. But here it is not barely seen. And the, pop, the chart below is the map of the world by the population. Notice that regions where the population is big, actually the science, very little is known about the scientific aspects of health. This is this science in general, not just healthcare. For healthcare, the science of healthcare, the, uh, it'll be even smaller. The disparity would be even more. Right? So what is happening because of this? Lord, the way the healthcare is practiced in a lot of the world is dictated by insights generated from some other region, the global north. And that is going to lead to a lot of inefficiencies, inaccuracies of practice. And that is what we want to target here. So if we can enable science to happen in regions where the populations are actually huge, then healthcare will be more efficient. That is, that is the idea here. OK, so what, what are the challenges in Global South? So one is regulatory, you know, regulatory approvals because people, when it comes to health data, people are not sure how to deal with it. What are the privacy and security challenges, right? I mean, uh, in, in the global north, it has been a fast and even right now moving topic. And in the global south, a lot of learning has yet to happen. So there is distrust. There's distrust about, about these things, and uh, so regulations have to catch up. There's low investment in health ID. There's low investment in research. So you'll find that hospitals or healthcare institutions invest less in ID. What we take for granted here, we, in, in our hospital system here, we have tremendous IT capabilities in the hospital. We've got Department of Biomedical Informatics and stuff, which is we take for granted. That is not there in a lot, lot of the places in the world. The lack of a research culture, uh, traditionally because there's less funding. And also, clinically, people think that research is a waste of time. Why not see patients and give patient care rather than getting involved in research? That also was a mindset here before the CTSAs. A lot of effort happened in the US, too, for building a research culture. And that's what's happening uh, in the rest of the world right now, that the research culture is being built up. So. Uh, Clinicians who do research have, have yet to be looked up in a positive way in the global south. And final thing what we found is there's lack of awareness that data exists. So EHR systems are being used in the global south. They've been used recently for the last five years. right? And people don't even realize that tremendous amount of data is being accumulated, which can be used for analysis. So that realization is, is, is absent, and this can be a hurdle. OK. So what have we done uh, to make I2B2 accessible or usable in the global south? Uh, one is a, we've made this stack. It's a new stack of I2B2, which is easy to deploy. Uh, and here are the papers. You can look up the papers, and you know, you'll find the materials, and you can download and play with stuff. So it's easy to deploy. ETL is simplified. Uh, and there is functionality beyond just generating counts. And there's an API for injecting computations. More of this, if I have time, I'll have a demo. And I encourage you to attend the workshop tomorrow if you want to get your hands on, on some of this functionality. Uh, and uh, with support from Dell, we're kind of making a box, a low, low, uh, low cost or efficient box, which if a hospital is interested Institution in the Global South is interested in having I2B2. The box could be shipped out to them, and they could just get started on I2B2 very fast without going through a lot of the installation stuff, which they may not be aware of. OK, uh, this, this is about, about I2B2, right? So when we look at I2B2, what comes into mind? The star schema, you know, all the tables. And understanding the internal data structures is a big stumbling block for anyone wanting to get onto I2B2. Uh, so in this body of work, what we have tried to do, effort is to simplify 
the end user doesn't need to know, not the end user, even the deployer doesn't need to know what the internal tables are. Right? So think of data as just two boxes, data and metadata. So your data is who, when, and what. Just four columns, who, when, and what. And your metadata, or the concept dimension, is specifying what, what is, you know, elaborating, uh, elaborating the what, right? So for example, the first row in the fact table is patient with medical record number one has a GLU of 160 on 1st Jan 2010. And what GLU is explained in the other table, right? GLU is a blood glucose, uh, is a lab done on the blood, and it's an integer. So the, two, the requirement here is for the hospital IT staff to denormalize, to dump all the data in their EHR system in just these two tables, in, in, to just form these two tables. And then the I2B2 tooling, the ETL tooling would put it into I2B2. And they don't have to bother about generating the patient nums or the encounter nums and the metadata. All those tables are automatically taken care of by the ETL tool. And so we have been, uh, there are around six to eight institutions in the past six months who have been trying, working on this approach. And most of them have succeeded. So you don't need to have complicated skills of data analysis, but basic SQL. If you can write SQL statements to generate these two tables, you can have I2B2 deployed. And we'll do the hands-on on this tomorrow in the workshop. Okay, and you, there you see an ETL tab, which allows you to play, and you can easily create your own ontologies. Just by creating the concept file, you can be creating your own ontologies. Okay, this goes into detail, I know, about how you can have your, uh, so your EHR data is like this, it's a relational and you're denormalizing it and how the whole process flows, right? So making ETL easy has been a major effort. And there have been uh, several tiers of collaboration. So we've been working at, with individual hospitals, we've been working with medical associations like a Diabetology Association uh, in India, uh, working with the government and Dr. Gidam here uh, is gonna talk about uh, his plans about how I2B2 could be used in the government setup. And, and Global South is not just in Asia. I think we also have a Global South here in the US, right? There are regions, there are institutions, health information exchanges, I consider them Global South, because they traditionally don't have that investment and backing to use IT, but they do a lot of informatics. So we're having some HIs also use this stack. Uh, and let's see if it's going to save them resources and help, it's going to help them get onto I2B2. Okay, uh, so this is the project that uh, we are doing with the Diabetology Association. Uh, so, so the Diabetology, so this is a group of people, highly motivated clinicians who have private practice and they want to do research. And obviously uh, they can't share their data with each other. Um, so we have, we'll have an I2B2 instance for each clinic, and we'll form a grid, uh, and that's how they can, they can write, paper, write papers and, and do research. So hospitals are able, or clinics are able to do real-time collaborative analysis without sharing data. And Sean tells me this actually has been the original vision, like when you know, it was about getting used in the clinic and uh, you know, that I2B2 was developed. And over, over the time, over, you know, in the US, it's mainly research centers, mega academic centers who took it up. But the idea was to, uh, behind developing it initially was for it to be taken up, you know, uh, even in smaller clinics. And I think in a, in, a, in a way it's getting back to its original idea over here. Okay. Um, now, I, uh, Dr. Giram will elaborate on this, you know, I think I'll leave this slide to him, I'll save time. So. When you have a grid at, uh, at the level of, let's say, government institutions, right? You have you a network of all the hospitals. Policy makers can use a grid to make policy decisions, right? And that's a major use case. You can do epidemiology across, across sites. 
and that actually is the major use case rather than clinical care or uh, or operations we are operations would be at the level of the state how can the resources be allocated in an efficient way so so in this you are actually forming a grid and then uh, you have a enclave for public health researchers in the country to come and analyze the data in the grid okay so let me sum up uh, i got a couple of minutes what what has been achieved in the last 10 months so what we have achieved is an onboarding process that that has been our goal that is an onboarding process and i think uh, the i2b2 you know uh, uh, the i2b2 community the, or the i2b2 foundation has uh, has made this leap that okay we have to reach out to uh, we have to reach out to the community make it easy and uh, so onboarding process is anyone who's interested who thinks so this technology is there and it has so many uses but how to make it accessible right so this onboarding process is someone has an interest okay there is a process by which they can learn about i2b2 and have it quickly installed right so it doesn't have to be just the work groups or, or conferences that people learn about i2b2 so we're trying to get that process in place we want to make a highly usable etl stack we have generated evidence that data exists in the global south uh, we'll have some papers coming out on that. Uh, we have identified key collaborators for our work. We actually proposed a consortium of four sites for studying COVID, and uh, uh, and and by the time uh, you know it moved ahead, COVID was over. So we kind of pivoted away from COVID right now. We have written six proposals in this consortium, two of which uh, were funded, and we are looking at having a fellowship program. And our first fellow is going to come this year. So what's the road ahead? Uh, so there are basically two things, infrastructure and education. As Paul said, you, it's about building a community. You need to have, just having the infrastructure alone is not enough. Just having software alone is not enough. You need to educate and engage with the community. And uh, so we are planning a workshop conference in India in February uh, and planning workshops around it and having value demonstration projects. One of the challenges in Global South is that people have not done these kind of projects. So unless there are a few demonstration projects, it's hard for them to uh, elicit, make the value statement. So that's something we want to do. Uh, yeah, and obviously we want to ex expand on the analytical analytics functionality. Uh, that is, take I2B to beyond counts. If people can generate tables, uh, and I think you'll get to see that in the workshop tomorrow, how you can generate a table in I2B2 and how you can uh, even inject computations in I2B2. And then, and after that, I think we would be ready to scale out. So right now we have kept the consortium closed. It's by invitation uh, because we are, we want to prepare ourselves that, you know, when you open it out, we got to be able to help the community. Right now we can't, we can't handle those many requests. Okay, I want to thank, uh, stop with this acknowledgement slide. Uh, I want to thank Sean really you know, uh, for, 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 for his commitment and uh, really following through with this project and Zach and, and, um, uh, and, and Suzanne and, and Diane and Desiree who are always you know, uh, heavily involved in investing their energy in this and the rest of the folks. Let me stop here. Uh, I think I should invite Dr. Giedem uh, to speak. I think we'll have questions later.